Thank you so much for coming here. I know lots of buzzwords are in the title, so I will try to make it as easy as, uh, as easy to understand. So what we have seen within the last two years is the way that we are interacting with knowledge is changing, right? So before we were just typing words, getting the responses, trying to find which link to interact with, read a lot and et cetera. And with the large language models, basically this interaction is totally changing. Today, if you want to ac access to your knowledge, what you do is you basically start try typing in a natural language and you are expecting to get a response in a natural language. And this simplifies lots of things. Instead of back and forth with lots of data, you can now easily read, understand what you need, and then you can drill down into the details if you want with additional citations that the AI will be providing you and so on and so forth. So today what I will do is I will try to look at what comes ahead beyond just basic, you know, large language model conversations. What else you can do with a large language model? How you can personalize it, how you can customize it. So instead of each time you explain who you are, what you are doing, what are your interests and et cetera, how you can use a memory within which you can keep those kind of personalized, personalized insights so that each time you interact with an LLM, it will bring you things that are related to you versus generic responses. And as well, we will also ground it with some of your own data with a retrieval augmented generation matter so that instead it will give you, you know, again, random answers from the web. It will provide you answers that you're interested in within the grounded data that you have in your own repositories. So this will be high level architecture of what we will be building today. So what we will have is, you no, know, we will have two assistants that will help us. Those will be the travel assistant and the product advisor. As the name states, you know, travel advisor assistant helps understand how we can plan our travel, what kind of tools they can use. And as well, the product advisor will try to help me suggest products that I might be interested in. And while doing so, I will use AI search as my, you know, not retrieval engine. And I will use two different ways, the AI search within this demo. The first one, I will use Mem0. I don't know if you are familiar with it. It's a open source and as well as SaaS service where it's a contextual memory that, you know, provided with, with an open source code, uh, open source tool. But as well, you know, you can leverage different available similar products like Mem0. And as well, we will use like um, AI search as a separate index where we will be having our own product catalog. So the idea here is, you know, we like skiing. We are living in Seattle. Whistler is so close by. So whenever we go there, I do lots of planning on behalf of the family, right? Where to stay, where to ski, where to eat, and so on and so forth. So this year, what I decided is, what if I will build that, you know, agent or an agentic framework, which could help me instead of I will go and check all these things to simplify the experience for me, recommend some restaurants, recommend some ski slopes, and so on and so forth. So I will show you lots of code, but don't worry about it. The, the session is recorded, and as well, the code is available in a GitHub repo. So, you know, just keep along with the, the presentation. You don't need to, you know, keep up with the code if, if you don't really want to. So with that, I will just switch to the demo. Um, I will be doing the demo within Python, and we will build this agent step by step. Within the first, of course, you know, uh, what we will do is uh, we will read the environment variables. So what I will do is I promised to do it in live. I will be restarting my kernel, and I will start step by step running this demo. So let's start from the first step. The first step is basically reading all my environment variables ensuring that I have my Azure AI search point available, ensuring that I have my Azure OpenAI endpoint available, and as well loading a couple of additional things like MEM0 and et cetera to the memory. So within the first part, what I will demonstrate to you is, hey, I have a user query, which I will be asking, hey, I'm going to, you know, um, skiing, what I should do, and I will just get a response from OpenAI. So no memory, no rag, anything else. As you can see, you know, here, um, we have the system prompt saying that you're a helpful travel assistant. And basically, what I'm, I'm, I'm giving my prompt is, my name is Ben, and I need recommendation of nice places that serve beverages near the ski lift. I kind of make it really you know, generic. I didn't want to give specific you know, explanations here, as I will be you know, building it through the memory and the agents. 
So as I run it, you know, uh, we would, as it, you might be expecting, we use the OpenAI, we send the prompt, we get the responses. And let's look at the responses. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting a bunch of responses saying that, hey, there's a nice place in Colorado, another in Whistler. It is pretty generic, right? So because it doesn't know whether I'm going to Whistler or somewhere else and what I mean by beverages. So it is providing me a random a series of stuff. So what else, I, what next I will do is I will enable the memory. While enabling the memory, you know, I will, you know, load the several uh, configurations regarding the memory. The first and the most important part is all my travel memories are kept within an AI search index. So all the interactions I am doing basically are stored within a separate index that is, that is dedicated to my user. So imagine if you are below developing a scale, you might need to capture as well the username so that you will be able to identify which users are you are looking after. And additional things like the embedding models, um, the deployment, these are pretty generic. And then I initialize my memory. So what will happen next is, as you can see here, I have now an AI search together with MEM0 in it. And I will be loading a couple of past conversations as a next step. And you can do it in multiple different ways. So here, what I will do is, I will keep a memory saying that I enjoy skiing and outdoor activities. I also like drinking coffee with a mountain view. Think about those are my previous interactions with this website or with this system. The second one is a chat conversation that I had with the agent that I was using in this website before, talking about my annual ski trip to Whistler. And that where I'm saying I'm a ski expert and I like skiing a lot. And the next one, what I will say is, okay, I had an injury last year, and that's why I want to avoid like advanced ski slopes and black slopes. Like imagine this has all the conversations that has happened with myself and the, you know, the website before. What I'm doing here now is storing all these information into the memory, which means basically I'm storing all this conversation in a contextual manner into an AI search index. So my memory is done, and the, ne the next step, what we will do is, um, you, we will be building on top of it the travel assistant next, and we will show the I will show the travel assistant and memory integrity uh, interaction as the next two. Uh, the travel assistant, as the name suggests, you know, will be responsible for the travel. Uh, let me run it while I'm talking about it. Again, bunch of you know configuration parameters saying that this is the index you need to use. This is the chat completion model you need to use. This is the embedding model you need to use. And you need to enable the memory for this conversation. And then what I'm doing here is, whenever I start or initiate this travel assistant, what I'm I just uh, saying is that it should go read the memory, identify relevant information memory, pass it to a chat GPT together with the, the questions. Like instead of just the query that the user is sending, now we are as well bringing the information from the memory and sending those together to the agent so that it will be able to respond me back. So let's go and see what happened here. This is the interaction part of it. Now I'm asking the same question. My name is Ben. I need recommendations of nice places that serve beverages near the ski lift. So let's see what will happen now. As you might suggest or think, Travel Assistant now is in charge and it is first looking at my previous memory and retrieving some relevant information from the memory. Like it says, okay, this person likes drinking coffee with a mountain view, enjoys skiing and wants to avoid, you know, black slopes. Now, if you look at the responses, all these suggestions that I'm getting are in Whistler Mountain that are serving delicious coffee, that are serving coffee again within the Whistler Gondola, and so on and so forth. So we don't see any other, you know, skip locations. Even though when I say beverages, as it looks at into memory and knows that when I say beverages, my first preference is coffee. It is bringing me back some information regarding the places that serves coffee, coffee with a nice view. So this is how you can leverage memory if you want to for customizing the experience. And I'm just showing here like for a user, but eventually you can use it in an enterprise scenario as well, right? If you are working in HR versus if you are working in finance, the way that you are interacting with your system, the way that you will be expecting responses might be totally different. You can either use enterprise level customization or you can make it like a user preferences and user-based customization as well. In the next phase, 
uh, what I will do is, first I will a little bit slow down, and then I will show you the complete picture. Uh, as I have shown in the first slide, this is the complete picture, where now we will be bringing one more assistant or an agent, which is the product advisor. And as well, while bringing the product advisor, now we will be also using Autogen. Autogen is our one of the tools for like multi-agent interactions, where the, uh, the Autogen will manage those agents, when as well interaction within the agents. And while doing so, the travel assistant now will use the memory. However, the product advisor now will use the memory and as well my search index for understanding which products I'm after. So two advisors, two agents, one of them just memory, the other one memory together with the search index. And now what I will do with the product advisor is it will be able to suggest products within my search indexes, within my indexes or within the product catalog that I have versus anything that is available within the web. So how we will be build it, um, let's scroll a little bit down. This is the product advisor. Again, you know, utilizing the travel memories for the memory piece, um, LLM, embedding models and etc. for the rest. But this time, you know, it has two, co it has two actions. One of them is again retrieving the information from the memory, but as well as a second step, it will be searching my product catalog. As you can see here, I'm saying it, okay, with that query, go search my product catalog and bring me back relevant, you know, suggestions or that, you know, uh, users so that whatever I will suggest will be relevant for that person. Uh, let me run it while we are moving forward. And this is the prompt for the, you know, system advice, uh, product advisors saying that, hey, you are the product advisor. This is the, you know, the capabilities that you have and so on and so forth. Now as we have the product advisor ready, and this is the search piece of it. Like this is how you will access the search. I'm saying that this is my search index. I will be, you know, using the text vector field for retrieving the information. And I will be bringing back relevant results from the chunks and as well from the title field. Uh, this is the one of the capabilities of the product advisor. And in this part, we will be connecting all together within Autogen. What will happen here is, um, let me scroll down. As you see, I have now two instances. One instance is the product advisor. The other is the travel assistant. And both of them have access to my memory. And I will be using them as function tools within the agent framework that I created. So those will be two function tools my assistant agent, Autogen, could be able to reach and utilize whenever needed. And in the system prompt, I'm clearly saying that, hey, use the product advisor to help answer the gears and clothing related information and the travel assistant for the rest of the, you know, the conversation. What I will do now here is also, you know, I provided two sentences. One of them is, hey, could you suggest me some ski, um, gear trip, uh, ski, and gear for my hiking and ski trip. And in the second one, I'm asking what, you know, what are the ski slopes that are best for me? As I'm hoping now it will remember that I had an injury last year and then provide me much more safer slopes. And this is how I will do the rest. Like the termination is like when you hear, when you see this ter term terminates, you will stop the conversation and they will be using the assistant and the tools in a round robin. And this is how we display it. And then I run it while we were chatting. So as you can see, I'm using the travel assistant first, and then I will be using the product advisor. So I'm just utilizing both. And when I ask, you know, if it can, you know, suggest me some gear for the trip, it first loads the memories that are relevant for this conversation, and then does a text search to retrieve the product information that I have, like the products, product items, and et cetera, and et cetera. And eventually it will say to me that, hey, these are the three products with their prices that are relevant and you know, will be valuable for your you know, hiking trip. And then let's look at the next one. Um, sorry, so the next one is here. Um, uh, yeah, since you, are, uh, you, you wanna focus on the beginner slopes, I didn't say beginner slopes. Like I just asked it, hey, suggest me. But as it knows that I wanna avoid the advanced ones, it can use the memory and respond me back to you know, simpler ski slopes that I can, YouTube, that I can uh, um, enjoy during this trip. So as we rush through, uh, I hope it was helpful. 
Um, I know this is a recorded session, so I hope you will go and review it once more if you want to look at. And as you can see, we used Autogen, AI Search, Mem0, and as well OpenAI. But as well, you can do the exact same thing with multiple different tools like Semantic Kernel, AI Foundry Agents, and etc. And if you want to learn more about how you can use AI Search, Retrieval, Memory kind of capabilities, these are additional sessions, actual you know, breakout sessions, and as well labs, which are relevant to AI Search, if you want to learn more. Thank you so much for your time.